Okay, sorry about that. It looks like we only got one person back here. Um, can you hear me that's still on here? So sorry about that. Uh, you guys that are back on here now, can, can you guys hear me? Somebody let me know. I should probably turn off my camera maybe. Yes, okay, well I got one yes. So I'm, I'm assuming that um, you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. I'm having some technical difficulties with my machine. In fact, I, I believe I forgot to shut down uh, one of my other running dev boxes and I might have um, overused my resources and I had a uh, kind of a system, um, my system froze a bit and I had to re reboot. So um, I probably need to remember maybe between when I'm doing these classes where I have you guys right after another one to might, might try to make sure I reboot my system every time just to make certain everything's kind of back um, stable here. So I'm rebooting up my dev box um, at the moment. I'm going to turn off my video to help some of the lag issues here too. Um, okay. So that'll take a little bit of a while to come up. But were there any kind of questions on where I was when we when I had to kind of reboot there? while we're waiting for this to come back up. So um, when I come back, I'm gonna try the, the, by initializing those three member variables that should allow us to start passing some of the unit tests. Um, so, which was what the first task that was described that you had to do for the, um, for the hypothetical machine there, so. Um, and then kind of after that, for initialized memory, um, for that first function, besides initializing those member variables, um, I, I suggested that you do one or two other things, including um, I asked you to do some checks and throw a, uh, an exception if there were some, um, uh, if, if if some of the values that you tried to initialize memory with uh, don't make sense. So I was going to maybe try and show those today here. So let's see, I got the dev, back, dev box back up finally. So I kind of didn't shut down cleanly. So I don't know if uh, we'll get everything back that we had up or not. So, um, there we go. So this is where I stopped before, before I had, before my machine kind of froze on me a bit. Um, we just put those in there um, and I kind of wanted to show the test. So I, I had shown down here below that uh, you won't have to make any modifications to these, but so these accessor methods basically just return the mem whatever values in the member barrel. So by uh, initializing the base address, which we pass in as 300, uh, it should end up being able to get this test to pass. And by initializing the bounds address to 1,000, you should get that one to pass and then by calculating the size, it should get that one to pass as well. So maybe I should try to build here. So I'd see if that build, uh, when, when, when I left last time, it had successfully built. So it, and, and uh, I had actually run the test. So now if we run the tests for that, um, you'll get a lot of failing tests. But if you go back up to your first one, you'll see that now the first failing test is the one at 36 here, okay? So, um, which wasn't quite what I was expecting. Oh, so this is a common error that people did. I, I mixed those around, but yeah, so we, we actually passed 34. So, so we, we, we successfully initialized the memory base address to be 300. And then when we returned that using the accessor, uh, it, it, it checks out that it's true that when we get the memory base address from the simulation, uh, that we get the expected value of 300, okay? So that's what these unit tests are doing. And likewise, we passed the one on 35, but notice we passed the one on, we, we failed the one on line 
36 here because we were expecting 700 and we got negative 700 because I should have took the bounds address, which is a thousand minus instead of the other way around. Oh, and so again here to illustrate, so now that I, since I modified this, it'll only have to rebuild um, the hypothetical machine simulator CPV file. So it won't, what I'm getting at is it, it won't take very long normally to build because it doesn't have to rebuild the, um, uh, the these tests here, which do take a long time to compile, right? So it should only take a few seconds to build that. So, so you can make a change, and then control shift T to run your tests, um, and check if we've got that working. So yeah, now we got past those, and our first one that's failing is all the way down here at 53. So, so check throws here. So, um, so to bring back up our assignment description, um, Um, there are a couple of things that you have to do, but you won't have to really do them till a little bit later. You, you do need to dynamically allocate um, your array uh, to, to simulate for the memory that you need for this simulation. And I, I think I'm going to give that one to you as well here today. Um, kind of show you that if you're not um, as familiar with doing dynamic memory allocation with C++, so uh, we'll be using that a little bit. Um, Uh, yeah, I mostly talk about dynamically allocating the memory. I guess um, I should have also mentioned, though, about this exception here. Um, uh, I had that, I think I had that down in kind of the, the, the comments. Um, allocate a new array, um, ensure that the contents are set to zero, initialized. Um, um, oh, well. Boy, um, I, sh I should add this to our assignment description. So, uh, the the other so, so right now we're we're failing here because we're expecting that um, if we reset the simulation um, and if we initialize memory. Um, so I should probably have a few more checks in here, but but basically, memory. The, the valid memory addresses should be only from 100 should be the lowest address. That's because, um, again, that's because of, of the format of the hypothetical machine that we use, right? Um, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, 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 the lowest address can be zero. So again, remember that the opcodes from your, um, your written assignment today, the, the, like in hex, there was uh, four digits where the first digit was the opcode, and then the next three di hex digits were the um, memory address that you might be referencing for the opcode. So that implies, in hexadecimal, um, I, I kind of, in, in our, in, in this um, coded simulation, I kind of ignore that these are actually hexadecimal, and, and we're, we're really treating them as decimal, um, to tell you the truth. So, but that means that the, 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 I mean, you can't have a negative address, right? So you shouldn't allow negative one or negative, anything below zero shouldn't be allowed. Um, but we're not really testing that here. And I, I should probably add that in as a test. But likewise, you really can't have address above 999 um, for the three digits. So, um, um, so that's kind of what we're checking here, right? So, um, the way to do that is, um, so for example, if, um, if the memory base address is less than zero, um, or memory bounds address is greater than a thousand, I guess technically again, maybe I should be checking, um, now, that, now that I'm looking at this, I, I wouldn't mind going back and fixing this. So it really should be 999 should be the highest one that we that, that would be possible if we're just directly taking those three digits to be our address here. So um, we should be checking like 1000 should be invalid, but um, which is kind of what I'm doing here, uh, greater than or equal to 1000. But um, 
anyway, if, if it's either of those, um, you should do something to, to throw an exception. Um, so that's kind of the way that we handle bad values in the classes for our simulations here. So we, we throw Um, and I think there's some examples of throwing simulator exceptions uh, in here. So maybe I'm going to search for that. So um, so for example, you can dynamically create a message like this. But yeah, to, to throw uh, an exception in C++, you use the throw keyword, you give it basically a, an instance of an object. So we're going to give it an instance of this class. And the way that you initialize the simulator exception class, you just give it a string. So, um, something like that would be um, sufficient for now. I, I think if you look at this in the um, solution that I give, that I will end up posting, um, in order to make the, the messages that you might get from throwing an exception more human readable, uh, you might want to provide some information in here. So since you have a string, um, you can dynamically um, uh, set up the string by, by you know, doing something like say, um, C++ you can use plus to do string concatenation so um, we can have this string and then concatenate um, the, the result of converting the memory base address to a string You know, it, it actually isn't important what message that you have for the exception, but um, it's just an example. Um, so that that's kind of all the what, what's what's happening here with this exception that's thrown here. So so now if I, if I had the um, the logic correct here, uh, if we call initialize memory and we give a, a bad um, base address or a bad bounds address, it should throw an exception to And, and we're, we're saying in the test that we're, we're expecting it to throw um, a simulator exception um, if we call it with this bad memory address here. Right? So that, that should allow this line 53 unit test to, to pass here. If we rebuild, And then we run our tests again. But that, that, that's the general workflow of how these assignment work. So um, you go find the first test that's failing, um, figure out how to implement the things so that your code is working correctly to pass that test, and then you go on to the next one. So yeah, now we're passing this 53, and our first one that's failing comes down here to 71. Um, 971. So. Um, the second, um, the second unit test here having to do with the, the translate address, uh, we're now actually on to the, um, second step uh, in the assignment here. So, so this is a description of, of kind of what you need to do for the translate address, okay? So one thing, although there, there were some extra things that were talked about that um, um, if you don't implement these later on, um, it, it's gonna expect that you've initialized memory, but you've also allocated some memory here. So some later tests will fail if you don't do what's discussed here to uh, allocate 
uh, memory sufficient to, 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 for your simulation and initialize it all to zeros, basically, right? Um, so, like I say here, to do that, if, if uh, back to this first one here, so if, if we have a memory, a simulation of memory that goes from address 300 to 1,000, that means we, ne we must have enough memory space to hold 700 values, okay? So that's, that's where the memory size comes in. So what you want to do in initialized memory is you want to dynamically allocate um, an array of integers to, to represent the memory that we're going to be simulating using the new keyword to do dynamic allocation. So, um, so I'll just show that. Um, so like I was saying, uh, for step two, um, and, and you might want to, like I say, uh, check this out here. So th the simulator is meant to be rerun. So, um, or it can be reset and, and rerun with new simulations. So initially, the, the, this memory is meant to hold the array of memory contents, the, 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 the member variable called memory. Okay, so that, that's our actual contents of the simulation's uh, memory here, right? So um, initially, if you look at the, um, the constructor that I gave uh, near the top, um, the constructor calls reset, and what reset does is if it checks if memory, so if memory is allocated, then this won't be null, and it'll be true, that, the, that you know, this, this statement will be true, and it deletes memory. So that's how it dynamically um, freeze up memory, right? So we can do the same thing in our initialized memory. So if we're initializing a new set of memory, we might also want to check if there's memory already allocated and to free it up, delete it. So um, copy that, go back to the initialized memory here. So here, um, I do like to, you should try and make certain that your comments um, uh, match up. And if I give comments that are meant to be like instructions for the assignment, you might want to either remove them or, or kind of match them up. So, you know, so in this case, actually we paste this in here first. Um, so I'm really doing this right now. So if, if memory's already allocated, um, we free it up, um, and then, so this first thing that we did before we rebooted was we um, we set the base and bounds address. Then we check and free up memory. And then this is the, the allocation step. So like was described in the assignment description, um, we create a new array of integers of, of the size of memory that we need to simulate. That's what we said there, right? Yeah, so that, that was what we were talking about. So again, um, if you don't do this um, um, later on, some tests, you, you will have to get this in here, but you don't need those. You could move on to step two at this point, and then come back and get this in here once we start um, uh, doing some things. So, uh, but, um, but yeah, that would create memory dynamically. Uh, so this is just an array of integers. Um, and then you should, should, should ensure that it's all initialized to zero. So um, something like, oh, I noticed, so there's no ambiguity. There's only one thing called memory size, and that's the, um, the, um, 
the member variable of my class, right? So once I um, assign a value to memory size, um, I can refer to it without the this, because there's no local variable called memory size, there's just the, um, there's just the member variable memory size, right? So anyway, so, so we, we actually assigned it, and now we're, we're creating an array of like 700 for this first test that we're doing, um, and now we're gonna allocate it all to zero. So I also encourage you to always use kind of meaningful variable names. So instead of something generic like I, these represent kind of memory addresses. So we start at memory address zero, or, but it, it really is index zero because we're simulating memory as, as a regular array, C array here. So we start at index zero, go up to, you know, so if we have a memory of, of 700, memory size of 700, the valid addresses in this uh, array are from zero to 699 in this case, all right? So anyway, um, so the memory address, we just initialized to zero. So really that's everything that you need, um, including this, for this first step, for this first function, including also checking for um, exceptions. put that at the very end here I think although oh no I should probably put that so um, yeah it wouldn't be a good idea to try to allocate memory if there's a problem with the the, the base or the bounds address so actually where I had that it's probably a good place to to put the check and to, to throw the exception if um, there's some bad specification um, actually even maybe before we delete memory So we're checking that memory base and bounds um, are um, reasonable by this. And um, there we go. And let's go ahead and make certain that run our builds and we're still passing the test that we were passing. Always, you know, again, always uh, um, try and make your code readable, try and use meaningful names and always only change one or two small things and then recompile it and rerun your tests. Make certain that you didn't break anything um, and that you're still passing or failing the same test where we were before. So yeah, we're still back at, um, we're ready for step two now at this point uh, where you need to write the translate address member function. All right. Okay, um, I've gone past what I'll, I, I would normally stop by 4 or 3.55, so I went a little bit because we had to stop in the middle, but um, any, uh, any questions from the people that stuck around here that uh, you want to ask about something? Next Monday, I plan to, uh, well, first of all, see if people have more questions. I probably won't give you more uh, implementation of assignment one, so you need to continue on by doing the translate address, peek and poke address, and other things, right? Next Monday, I'll probably talk more about the, uh, answer questions and talk more about how the actual simulation works for this assignment and stuff, so. All right, no questions? Um, all right, so I'm not getting any questions. So uh, if there's no questions, um, okay, um, I will kind of leave it there then. And um, I, guess, I guess I'll see you guys on Monday. If you think of questions later, as always, feel free to just email them to me. So, all right, see you guys later.